Thank you so much, President Hemeseth. Mr. President, Abbot Claussen, and members of the monastic community, trustees, faculty, graduates, of course, families, and friends. And I want to again say, importantly, the class of 2014. It is a great honor to be here to celebrate your graduation. It is a happy day, for it is one of life's great accomplishments to successfully complete your college education. And it is a gift to receive that education from such a fine and unique institution as St. John's. Anyone fortunate enough to be associated with St. John's knows that it is a special place. But this view is not limited to those who pass through here, but it is a view shared by many of us living outside Collegeville. And it is a view that I have held for most of my life. I have always felt connected to this place. My personal connection is rooted in my family. My father, Jerome Blatz, was born into a devout Catholic family. He was one of eight children. His two and only brothers both became priests, and his two oldest siblings became Benedictine nuns, Sister Imogene and Sister Mildred Ann, and they spent the majority of their life at St. Benedict's. During that time, early on in that time, they were joined by their youngest sister, my Aunt Teresa, who also graduated from St. Benedict's. And today, largely because of the influence of my aunts, the Blatt's extended family is populated with many, many graduates of St. John's and St. Ben's, including five cousins who are currently students at both schools. Yet while I am proud of my personal connection, I do not believe my respect for St. John's University is rooted in family bias or parochialism. It is a respect that has grown out of many, many encounters that I have had with graduates of this fine institution. It is a respect that has been earned by those of you who are alumni or otherwise affiliated with St. John's. And it is because of the respect I hold for St. John's that I was so pleased when my son Maxwell applied to different schools, visited different schools, and finally decided that St. John's had what he was looking for. Shortly after Max made his decision to go to St. John's, a family friend Dr. Glenn Nelson asked me, where's Max going to college? I replied, St. John's, and his face immediately lit up. He told me what a great choice Max had made and went on to tell me why he thought it was such a great university. To fully understand his perspective, you need to know a little bit about Dr. Nelson. Dr. Nelson went to Harvard University undergrad, and then he went on to medical school to become a surgeon. Later, he went on and had a very accomplished, to become a very accomplished businessman, a medical leader, and a dedicated philanthropist. His broad experiences include stints as CEO of Park Nicollet Medical Center, Senior Vice President at, Med at Medtronic. Let it suffice to say, he is a pillar of our state. Interestingly, Dr. Nelson is not a Catholic, but has served as a trustee, or regent back then, of St. John's. Dr. Nelson told me that he was deeply impressed by the St. John's community. He shared that over the many years when he hired for positions, be it in the medical field, in business, or in philanthropy, 
he would receive stacks of applications. And when he went through them, he would pull out all the graduates of St. John's and to give them a second look. When I asked him why, he told me that it was his view that St. John's University offered an extra dimension of a community culture that was bled into the students. He believed after spending four years at St. John's, the graduates were imbued with a certain spirit that gave them a deeper understanding of humanity and ethics, a quality that Dr. Nelson believed was often more important in life than intellect. Dr. Nelson's respect for St. John's was not born out of a family connection or religious affiliation. No, it was a respect and is a respect that is based on his personal interaction with many members of the St. John's community. For it is in these interactions that we on the outside observe firsthand how the Benedictine values are lived out. I share these observations from Dr. Nelson with you today for two reasons. First, to recognize that you, graduates, are about to leave this very supportive St. John's community and fully returned to the outside world. That transition poses challenges. And second, I share his observations with you to challenge you, the class of 2014, to ask yourself, what does it mean to be a graduate of St. John's? How are you going to live a life that reflects the Benedictine values? First, let's talk about the transition. A recent cartoon in the Star Tribune quipped, first you get the college degree, and then you get the third degree. You know what the third degree sounds like. What are you going to do after graduation? Do you have a job? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do with the rest of your life? For some of you, you know the answers, at least some of them. For many of you, the answers are yet to come. It is true that the, a lot is expected of you. And we live in uncertain times. It's tough in the arena. 2014 looks a lot different than the year that I and, and many of your parents entered into the job market. That's a fact. For many of you, this time of uncertainty is, can be very unsettling. As a student, you figured out what to major in, who your friends were, what your professors expected of you, and how to fool your RAs. When you look ahead, all that certainty vanishes. It is the unknown. My advice to you, embrace it. A year ago, I came across a writing by an unknown author who described this time of transition brilliantly. The writing was entitled, The Flying Trapeze. The author likened the transition zone between the known and the unknown as the letting go space, between letting go of one trapeze in order to grab hold of the next one. The author wrote, most of the time I'm hanging on for dear life to my trapeze bar of the moment. For you, St. John's. It carries me along and I have the feeling that I'm in control of my life. But in my heart of hearts, I know that for me to grow, I must release the grip on the present well-known bar to move to the new one. I have noticed that in our culture, this transition zone is looked upon as a nothing, a no place between places. Surely the old trapeze bar was real, and that new one coming towards me, I hope that's real too. But the void in between, 
That's a scary, confusing nowhere that must be gotten through as fast and as unconsciously as possible. What a waste. I have a sneaking suspicion that the transition zone is the only real thing and that the bars are illusions we dream up to avoid where the real change, the real growth occurs for us. Whether or not my hunch is true, it remains that the transition zones in our lives are incredibly rich places. They should be honored, even savored. Even with all the pain and fear and feelings of being out of control that can accompany transitions, they are still the most alive, the most growth-filled, most passionate, most expansive moments in our lives. The author concludes that we need to give ourselves permission to hang out in the transition between trapeze bars, to allow ourselves to dwell in the only place that change really happens. While it can be terrifying, it can also be enlightening. Hurtling through the void, we just may learn how to fly. In my view, the author was right. Embrace this time of transition between St. John's and the what's next. In the end, the space between the trapeze bars will be as much a part of your life story as what you do when you are holding on. Which brings me to my second point. What will your being, a Johnny, say about you? How will your life honor the values that you were embedded with during your four years here? In answering that question, remember that it is not so much what you do with your life, but how you do it. When I was Chief Justice, I spoke to many, many groups of students and many law students. I was asked time and time again, what type of law practice should they practice? Should they become prosecutors or defense attorneys, legal aid? What did I think about corporate law or environmental law? My response was always the same. It is not what area of law you practice in, but how you practice law that matters. It is in the how that tells the world what a lawyer values and what kind of person he or she is. And the same is true for you. It is not what specific vocation you pursue or job that you get that will matter the most. It is how you as an individual, St. John's graduate, decides to live your life that will reflect what you value. Simply being a St. John's graduate is not itself sufficient. The reputation of St. John's and the respect that many others hold for you will be based on how you live your life. So despite all of our questions, it's not what you do or where you do it that will matter in the end. And always remember, that even though life ahead can be uncertain, you get to decide the most important part of your future, the how. But for now, on this graduation day, we celebrate how far all of you have come. You should be very proud of what you have accomplished. I know that your parents and families are. And let's be honest. Some of your family members may even be relieved. <laughs> I know that Max's two older brothers would fall into that category. While his father and I have always thought Max was a wonderful son, and he is, his older brothers have not always agreed. One day, some years ago, thank goodness, when I came from home from work, I was greeted at the door by, I have three sons, by my two older sons. Hunter, the oldest, was then 12, and Carter was 10. 
and they were very, very upset with their six-year-old brother. And I listened to their story as a good judge would, and then wanted to get the other side from the sitter. And she told me that you know the, bo the older brothers had been b basically just terrorizing him, Max, all day, but Max had pulled a butter knife on them. <laughs> now, given that it was a knife, a butter knife, I decided that Max needed to be punished regardless of what his older brothers had done to him. I wanted to draw a line in the sand about weapons at least in the house. So I thought, what could I do? So I meted out the most severe punishment that really you could ever do in, in my household. I thought about it. And so I told Max, Max, you are grounded from WWE and all fake wrestling for two weeks on TV. Now, with the maturity that I have now as a parent, that might have something to do with the butter knife that I was letting him watch it in the first place. But <laughs> anyway, it was a very severe punishment, trust me. And Max was sobbing. He was devastated. But his older brothers thought it was, a, just forget it. What a weak punishment. They went storming out of the room. And my middle son, Carter, he loves to write about his feelings and everything. And so he went off and he returned in about a half hour and he brought me a letter. It's real. It's true. This is a true story. And I will read it to you. Mom. There's no dears or loves in this. It's just straight. It was just... Mom. Max has become a big brat. And you should either punish him and then he puts in parens, give him a real punishment. <laughs> Visit a psychiatrist. <laughs> or let him be this way. Right now, the way you're punishing him is pathetic. <laughs> or kind of easygoing. I'd put him in his room for a night to let him think of what he's done. Ground him from wrestling. And if it happens again, punish him more severe. Remember, this is just opinion and suggestions, so Max isn't in prison for a decade when he gets older. <laughs> then in underline, he underlines, the choice is yours completely. Carter. <laughs> so we are grateful, Maxwell, that you are not in prison today and that you are here, and we are all celebrating, and I join all the parents, family members, and everybody on stage behind me to celebrate this wonderful day. And we are so grateful to St. John's for all that it has offered and that all that it has done for all of you. I congratulate each and every one of you, and I wish you the best as you let go of the St. Tra John's trapeze bar and fly to the next bar. And I am not talking about sales or the law. <laughs> Enjoy the transition, live out your values that support the greater good, and never forget that you are a part of a community that loves you and celebrates you. Congratulations, class of 2014.